Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video we're going to study basic multiplication and division equations. And that means, by multiplication equations I mean that x is multiplied by some number, and then division equations on this side where the unknown is divided by some number. But before we get into the equations, we're going to look at an important principle in simplification that's going to be used in all these equations. And that is that the number divided by itself equals 1. So even if I had a variable or an unknown, x divided by x, it's a number divided by itself. Even this will be 1. And then, of course, the same applies if you have a negative number. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 will equal 1. And the way we will use it is in this kind of a context. Let's say you have 6 times 7 divided by 6. What will that be? Usually, in algebra, we will denote, we will say the 6 cancel. The 6 and 6 cancel out, leaving just 7 then, okay? What in reality happens is that we get 1 here. The 6 divided by 6 equals 1, so we have 1 times 7. And so then that's just 7, okay? If, if you think this looks kind of difficult, think of the top part here this way. Switch it and make it 7 times 6. And then it reads 7 times 6 divided by 6. And you hear there the 7 times 6 divided by 6, okay? And that would be 1. So it leaves just 7. Over here is a variable there. 4a divided by 4. The 4's cancel and we are left with only a. Or think of it as 4 divided by 4 being 1 and then 1 times a is a. Okay? So the 4's cancel here. And here the negative 10's will cancel. Or you can think of it as negative 10 divided by negative 10 is 1. So we just are left with 1 times x. Now here's a very simple equation. You probably can see that the answer is, the solution is x equals 5, right? But we need to learn how to write the solution even for the simplest of equation, because then we will use that in more complex equations over there. The principle to use this is that we want to have x alone on this side. We want to isolate x. So since x is multiplied by 3, we will undo the multiplication by 3 by dividing both sides of the equation by 3. And you are allowed to do that. If you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, then the equality still stays there. The balance stays balanced. Remember the balance? Okay, so we divide this and this side by 3. And we get 3x gets divided by 3, and 15 gets divided by 3. And now, as you can see here, the 3's will cancel out, okay? Because it's 3 divided by 3. And that leaves x alone. x equals 5. Here we calculate 15 divided by 3. Let's do the same with negative 15. Again, I need to do the same. I need to divide both sides by 3 in order to undo the multiplication by 3 that there is. So 3x divided by 3. And here, negative 15 divided by 3. This, of course, again, the 3's cancel, leaving x alone. And here we calculate this, and now this time it is negative 5. Once you get your answer, once you get what x is, then check if that is really true. And put this value over here in place of x. Substitute it there. 3 times minus 5, is it really negative 15? Yes, it is. So it checks. Over here, look. The variable is multiplied by a negative number, negative 4. So we need to divide by this number. Both sides need divided by negative 4. So we have negative 4a divided by negative 4. And over here 24 gets divided by negative 4. And over here these cancel, so we are left with a alone. And over here we get negative 6. Once you get used to this idea, once you get used to dividing both sides by the same number, then you can maybe use a shortcut and not write it out in its fullness. For example here, let me show you how I tend to do. Negative 7y equals negative 700. 
y is multiplied by negative 7. So I need to divide by negative 7, both sides. And then, of course, when I divide by negative 7, just like here, I'll get the variable alone. So I'll just write here that y equals, okay? I simplify in my mind, so to speak. And then over here I write negative 700 divided by negative 7. Now I calculate this, y of course equals now positive 100. Remember, negative divided by negative gives you a positive number. Now here we have division equations. The variable is divided by something. And to undo the division by 2, we multiply. We need to multiply both sides here by 2, right? Okay, and that undoes the division by 2. Let me show you how it looks like. I multiply both sides by 2. Like that. This is multiplication, okay? And now, maybe you remember from fraction multiplication or somewhere, that 2 times x over 2 is the same as 2 times x over 2. It will be exactly like this, but just with 2. 2 times x over 2. Either way, the 2 and 2 cancel out, okay? Because it is multiplying by 2 and divided by 2. These cancel out, leaving x alone. And then x equals here. You calculate this, it is 10. As expected. I know it's a very simple equation. Over here, y is divided by 3. So what do we do to both sides of the equation? Right, we multiply both sides by 3. Okay, you can write it as 3 times y over 3. Some people use parentheses there. Equals 3 times this here. Negative 6. Now here, 3's cancel. We get y alone. And here we get negative 8t. Now what about here? This is the exact same type of equation as here. But the variable divided by something is on the right side. If this confuses you, just flip the sides, switch them. Write it again, writing this side here and that side over there. It's the same equation. You know, if x equals 5, then 5 equals x. You can flip the sides. And now, okay, b is divided by some number, so we need to multiply by this number. Multiply by negative 8. Both sides get multiplied by negative 8. And then here, negative 8 times negative 20. This now leaves b alone. b is 160. Remember, negative times negative gives you a positive. Over here, this is very, the very same type of equation. It's a simple division equation because the variable appears only here and is divided by something. The only difference is here that we have on this side something we can calculate. We can simplify it. We can calculate 3 minus 5. It's negative 2. Now, if it looks confusing to you, then flip the sides. This time I'm not going to flip the sides. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. So we get 3 times negative 2 equals 3 times that. Okay, and the 3's cancel here. And then we are left with this, which is negative 6 equals n. Now I'm going to flip it, because it's usual for us to write n equals instead of number equals n. Over here, the same situation, we have seen here something that we can calculate or simplify. So let's do that. 2 plus negative 3. Well, that's negative 1. Let me flip the sides now, so you can see clearly what's going to happen next. What do we do next? The variable is multiplied by 7, so to undo that, to get y alone, we need to divide both sides by 7, right? So, 7y divided by 7, and then over here, negative 1 divided by 7. What's that gonna be? You will study this more in a little bit, in a lesson that's coming up soon. But this is basically, it's a fraction. It's a negative fraction. y equals negative 1 7. Nothing wrong with that. Everything works just fine. Okay. Lastly, Lots of negatives here. Maybe it looks a little complicated. But remember, there's a double negative and that always makes things easy because we simplify it into a big plus, right? 
So actually there's negative 2 plus 5, which is 3. This side is still c over negative 4. Now c is divided by a number, so we multiply both sides by that number. We multiply this side by negative 4 and this side by negative 4. Let me now skip a step, okay? In my mind, when I multiply this by negative 4, I know the negative 4s cancel and I'm left with c alone, right? Then I'll skip the step on this side too and just do it in my head. I multiply this by negative 4, so what do I get? Right? Negative 4 times 3 gives me negative 12. There.